poo. What we need to do is collect fresh koala droppings right. from a koala that is well adapted to its diet, which these koalas here are. Right. And we can then harvest that bacteria and we can introduce it to oh, another koala. These healthy koalas will be donating their precious poo to another koala, which has been going off its food. Koalas can poo up to 200 times a day, so there's no shortages of samples to choose from. Well, this is a good one, look, the double header. Fresh is best when it comes to poo. Excellent, all right, two up. Hold on a minute, look, look up here. There's a couple that have perched on the brink, so to speak. Have anyway, we got one? Oh, there we go, hold on, they're still coming. Oh, here we go. Oh, God, look at that. Ah, there we are, beautiful, look. Three in one, yeah. We'll take as many as we can get. It's all about Sorry. bug numbers. <laughs> Don't you wipe your hand on my shirt, you horrible man. The trick is to collect samples from as many koalas as possible and then use them to make a gooey poo smoothie. Hello, young fella. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> ah, yes! <laughs> Good! Uh, well, that one goes I in the bucket, right? It. <laughs> the chances. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, with a bowl full of pooey koala goodness... Oh, no, look at this. I've got on my shirt. ..and a parting gift, it's time for stage two. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to mix a little bit of this warm water. Not delightful. Take your kitchen implement. A high-tech thing. Very high-tech. Now, mash away. Yes, the more you mash it up, the more bacteria we release, the better the quality. I still feel a few lumps. Yeah, so we'll just add a little bit more there. That's looking really good. I think you've missed your calling in life. There's a serious side to this. Early research has shown that these faecal transplants can change the koala's gut bacteria, allowing it to eat different eucalypts. So, Ian, I guess all of this work you're doing here is so we can reinforce the koala population and tra by translocating animals. Is that right? In the first instance, we want to breed up enough of them that if the downturn in populations in New South Wales and Queensland continue, then uh, translocation will become very important to those animals. Translocation could introduce healthy koalas into declining populations and improve genetic diversity. Or threatened koalas could be moved to safer habitats. But before any koalas can be released, they'll need to adapt to their new diet. So it's donor samples like this that can make the difference between surviving in their new habitat or dying. Underneath. Okay, so we've got some nice poo smoothie there. If you can get me three mils into that syringe, that would be Indeed. really good. Uh, so, do you get many complaints when you inject this up the back passage? No, because it doesn't go up the back passage. Oh, really? Which they're not overly thrilled about either. I wouldn't but, be. Uh, <laughs> well, but... I don't know whether I want to see this. <laughs> see it, you're going to do it. All right. Four of these translocated koalas have needed this intensive care to help them survive the shock of moving. So this is Brian Tim. He's been doing really well here and he's just started to lose more weight. So this is a fairly important thing to bring him back to full health. Right. I'm sorry to say, Brian, I've got to do something rather unpleasant. Well, I never thought I'd end up here. Hand feeding a poo smoothie to a koala called Brian. Well, I'm sorry, old Brian. Honestly, you've got to have it. There you go. Oh, well, I think I got it in. Most of it anyway. Oh, it must be. It must taste shocking. Don't blame you. But uh, it's for your own good. Okay. Okay. So he'll get a dose every day for ten days. Well, I've, got, but, I've got a tiny bit left. Should I give him that? Or? No, I think. He's uh, reached the end of his tolerance. Yeah, possibly. Yes, yeah, so and not before time. I'd be, I'd be far worse than you as a patient, mate, I can tell you. 
While techniques like this can help, translocating wild koalas into open habitats will need careful management. Over the next 30 years, we're translocating some of the fragmented koala populations. It is going to become an increasing part of our strategy, but it does come with costs, costs to the koalas, cost to the environment, and so we need to get it right. And that's what we're looking at at the moment, is trying to make sure that if we do this, we do it properly and effectively, and koalas and forests thrive. While our koala populations remain so vulnerable, translocation could be an important tool to help keep them off the endangered list.